Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. And we begin tonight with an alert from the City of Detroit Health Department. A four-year-old child confirmed to have a case of the measles. An investigation is underway right now as the child is in isolation. Here's what we know so far. The child was brought to three health care locations for treatment. And unvaccinated people in those locations at the same time could have been exposed to measles. Those locations are Acadian Urgent Care on Springwells and the Wright Health Pharmacy on West Verner, both on April 1st. And then the Children's Hospital of Michigan Emergency Room on the morning of April 3rd. All right, Dr. Frank McGeorge joining us now. Let's start with what stands out to you about this case and what we know so far. Well, you know, here's what really fascinates me, honestly. This was a four-year-old without any disclosed contacts with a person that had measles. Now, it might come out as health officials investigate, but right now, the big question is where this child became investigated. That is really the million-dollar mystery right now. So who needs to be concerned about the risk of exposure in those locations that we just mentioned? Well, of course, anybody that was unvaccinated, that's the first concern. But in particular, children who were under four who may not have received their second measles shot, who who might have been in the children's ER, uh, uh. they actually jumped to mind because, of course, at children's, they are going to have more young children. That's right. And these are people trying to take the precaution but just haven't gotten there yet. Yes. So what's your takeaway message then when it comes to measles right now in Michigan? Well, I think this case really hides something fascinating. It is out there, and you just never know where some exposure is going to pop up, and it highlights, frankly, the importance of being yeah. vaccinated, yeah. Yeah. number one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Doc. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. All right, now we turn to the NFL draft. Detroit really on the clock right now as we are a little more than 15 days away from that first pick, which right now belongs to the Chicago Bears, That's by the right. way. Yeah, so let's take a live look at construction downtown on that huge structure where those picks will be made. Three to four hundred thousand people are expected to attend over three days. And with that many people expected downtown, security is going to be high with all hands on deck for Detroit police. Yeah, tonight, Chief James White talking about all that's going into this. And Sean Lay went one on one with the chief today. The NFL draft in downtown Detroit, it has to go off perfectly safely. A major key in that safety in your safety are cameras covering every inch of downtown, looking at everyone, looking out for anything at all, even cameras in the sky watching all of that. What the camera sees being sent right down to police headquarters. Your time as police chief city of Detroit, this has to be the largest thing, the largest project you've had in front of you. Yeah, it is, and, and we've been planning now for over a year. Detroit Police Chief James White tells me more than 300,000 people will pack downtown for the NFL draft. You, it has to go right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge responsibility. Our community is poised for this success. Uh, we're going to be on a national platform, right. and we know uh, everyone's watching. We get to tell our story and show, show the world how we can be. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. I'm with the chief inside DPD's real-time crime center where cameras are monitored 24-7. Captain Erica Frederick is in charge of DPD's crime intelligence unit. This is a big job for you. It's, it's huge. a huge job. It's huge, but, you know, a lot of teammates in place. It's not just me. I'm just the face right here. Mm -hmm. so. Feel the pressure of it? Oh, it's definitely pressure. It's definitely pressure, but this is not our first event. And here is one big detail everyone needs to know about the draft. 100% no weapons whatsoever. No and you will be screened going into the draft. You will be screened going in. And again, I want to make, I want to emphasize mm -hmm. when people hear weapons, they think, think of guns. It's a weapons free zone. Mm -hmm. Guns and other weapons, knives, uh, brass knuckles. It is a yeah. weapons free zone. Your guys zone. are there protecting, so there's no reason for you to bring any personal protection. We will take care of the protection. You don't need any personal protection. Yeah. All right, here live in southwest Detroit, not downtown at the draft, because the point is DPD also has neighborhoods and neighbors to also police during the draft. Bottom line, guys, every police officer in the city will be on duty during the draft. Back to you. Yeah, okay, Sean, we appreciate it. Inflation is stubbornly hanging on, making it less likely the Fed will lower interest rates and sending the stock market plunging today. The culprits, gasoline, rent, and car insurance. But despite prices staying high, the economy is still strong with more people getting jobs month over month. The economy, a top issue for voters heading into the 2024 election, and the presidential candidates are taking their turns today with the news. An unnerving number today shows inflation ticked up again in March, adding to the strain on Americans' wallets and the political pressure on President Biden. We're better situated than we were when we took office where we, inflation was skyrocketing. 
and we have a plan to deal with it. Consumer prices rose 3.5% year over year, up from 3.2% the month before, with rent, gas, and auto insurance especially hard hit, though grocery price increases slowed. Overall, Americans have seen average prices increase more than 20% since the start of the pandemic. Former President Trump seizing on the new report. Biden has totally lost control of inflation. It's back. In a statement, President Biden saying inflation has dropped more than 60% from its peak and that reining it in further remains his top economic priority, noting the strong jobs market and rising wages that fuel price increases. Adding to the challenges, the stock market tumbled on the news with investors concerned about interest rates. The Fed cannot move to lower interest rates when prices are still showing signs that they could be trending higher. Hopes are fading for rate cuts. It could bring substantial relief in the housing market as inflation appears stuck at an elevated level with painful effects for consumers and the politicians searching for solutions. Of course, it's always the economy, right? But with these numbers and their wide-ranging impact, we'll expect the economy to keep playing a key role in the campaign moving forward. Some residents on Detroit's east side say the semi-truck traffic and industrial pollution is just too much. And that will be the topic at a community town hall meeting set to get underway in a little less than an hour from now. Jacqueline Francis is live on this story. Jacqueline, industrial activity on that part of the city has grown a lot over the past few years. It has, and with that growth comes a growing concern from the community about what it means for their health. Tonight's town hall here is going to address just that. It's a big concern on Detroit's east side. Industrial growth, like the Stellantis Mac Avenue plant, and its impact on air quality. Tonight's town hall looks to identify the problems and brainstorm solutions. The event itself is going to have some interactive activities where residents are going to be asked to kind of help us identify where the problem areas are with trucking and with air quality, both on the east side, but also across the city. So some mapping and then also some some brainstorming around what what are the problems that semi trucks are causing and then what are some solutions people want to see. The town hall is being put on by the East Side Community Network, an organization that's also interested in addressing concerns over the semi truck traffic in the growing industrial area. Part of that policy agenda has to do with semi-trucks and the impacts that they're having on our community, um, both through the Stellantis expansion itself, but also other distribution sites that have popped up since the expansion um, and the expansion itself limiting truck routes. So that town hall will get going here within the hour. They're expecting state and city officials to attend along with representatives from Eagle and the EPA. Reporting live in Detroit, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. All right, Jacqueline. There are a lot of job opportunities and open positions right now for Detroiters who want to get to work. And the city's making it a point to let you know it's looking for all types of talent, including returning citizens who may be looking for a second chance. Demond Fernandez has more from city staff who say they are, aren't counting you out. At this job fair in the city of Detroit on Wednesday, it's about opportunities and possibilities for those who want to get into the workforce. We definitely want to make sure that we're trying to get um, Detroiters working. Including returning citizens or formerly incarcerated men and women looking for a chance at work. Yes, we're looking for someone that can lead a crew. It's something construction and demolition director Lawan Count says her team's been advocating for years. Virtually everyone in the community is somehow connected to a return to citizen one way or another. Um, and it's important to ensure that they have a, a means to be able to return back and give back to the community. And giving back through work with the city has been helping some employees thrive. Workers like Ramon Watson. I did some fair time and um, when I came home, um, a friend of mine recommended me to come uh, shoot my shot for the city. Watson's been with the construction and demolition department five years, working his way through different roles and a recent promotion. When you came home, did you feel like options were limited? Did you feel defeated? Uh, to a certain degree, yeah, because of my background, but, um, you know, you just got to keep on pushing, man. Can't let nothing stand your way. Watson says he's thriving and feels supported. Right now, the Construction and Demolition Department has several open positions and is actively recruiting. For us, it's not only construction jobs, um, but there are also demolition opportunities, um, as well as just those trades, those basic level trades. So plumbers, electricians, um, carpenters, if you if you swing a hammer or turn a, pie, or turn a wrench, we're interested in having you. As for Watson, he's being described by colleagues as a rising star in the department. 
like you know how you, you feel like you're doing good, but just to hear somebody give you, just give you that, just tell you, it's, it's a good feeling to give you more motivation to keep on going. And if you missed today's job fair, you can always check specific city departments for a list of openings. Yeah. I'd imagine some residents may feel like uh, their background might keep them from being qualified or yeah. be a little bit intimidated about the application process. What are they saying to those residents? It's natural, but you know, city staffers are encouraging you to be proactive. There are several city departments who are actively recruiting returning citizens right now. They're offering training opportunities for you and competitive salaries. Even Watson says all you have to do is apply and go from there. Yeah. Yeah, shoot your shot. Like take, you take your first shot. step. I like exactly. that. Yeah. All right, Devon. All right. Thanks, All right. Let's turn our attention to the weather. A live look outside at Michigan Central. Yeah, we've got a little less than two months before it reopens on June 6th. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, got a whole lot of sun. A little bit cooler, though, than yesterday. Let's get over to Kim Adams and an update on the forecast. Kim. Yeah, a little bit. It was noticeable. Temps are in the low 60s. Yesterday, we were in the mid to even upper 70s, but we're still technically above average for this time of year. Clouds have moved in, but it's dry. 63 downtown, still hanging on to the mid 60s in Howell and Adrian and 64 in Pontiac. Uh, coolest spot you're going to find would really be 64 degrees with the exception of, oh, well, hang on, Rosiel and Monroe. Sorry, I didn't see those. 54, so a little bit cooler there uh, by the water. We've got a temperature drop from yesterday by about 10 to 15 degrees in some spots so it's definitely cooler and we have seen those high clouds move in and now the clouds that are mid and low levels starting to move in as well but rain won't arrive until after midnight tonight once it does soaking rains over the next two days tomorrow and again on Friday highs tomorrow in the low 60s by Friday we're only in the 50s Friday we add to it 45 mile per hour winds and possibly as much as an inch or two of rain. We'll talk about what that means coming up and your weekend if it'll stick around for the weekend. Thank you.